Hey y'all, welcome to Living Life by the Bibles. I'm in the kitchen today, I'm gonna be chopping up some vegetables so I can get ready to put my oxtails, season them up, put them in a refrigerator so that they can marinate overnight. So this is what I'll be doing. Stay with me, check it out. Let me know what you think. Okay y'all, so what I'm gonna do, I have a uh, an orange bell pepper, red bell pepper, habanero, jalapenos, green onions, green bell pepper, purple onion, and a white onion. I'm just going to get all this chopped up so that I can um, put it inside of my oxtail marinade. And then also I have this too that I'll be using along with it. I have this. I've never tried this before, but it's an oxtail marinade that I'm gonna to try using this time. Uh, see how, see what kind of flavor it gives it. I heard it's really good. It says it's savory and spicy. So I guess I'll have to make sure I don't put too much heat when I season it up, since this says it's spicy as well. I can see, I don't know if you can see it, but you can see some of the spices rolling around in the jar. So we're gonna try that out today. So let's go ahead and get started. First, I'm gonna chop up everything. And we can see about getting everything seasoned and marinated. Right now, I actually have my oxtails in the sink over here in a, a bowl with some water and apple cider vinegar. Just kind of letting them soak and clean, you know, get cleaned up a little bit before I actually season them. So just stay with me. I'll get everything chopped up and I'll come back once I actually have my seasonings pulled out of the cabinet and we can, um, I'll let you see everything that I'm going to use to actually season them with along with that marinade. So stay tuned and I'll be back shortly. Okay, y'all, I'm back. So I have all my vegetables chopped up. I have my, um, orange bell pepper, green bell pepper, jalapenos, habanero, purple onion, green onion, red bell pepper, onion, and I have some minced garlic here. Uh, these are all my seasonings that I'll be using to um, season up the oxtails with. So I have my flour, salt and pepper, tonies, uh, paprika, thyme, garlic, cayenne pepper, onion powder, accent, garlic salt, uh, Worcestershire sauce, the browning seasoning sauce, and that marinade that I'm gonna try for the first time. So we'll see how that, what that does to it, if it gives it an extra boost of flavor. But I also have my oxtails here that I mentioned I had uh, sitting in water with apple cider vinegar, just soaking. I'm getting ready to rinse those off and then season them up. So I'll be back with y'all in a minute. Okay, guys. Okay, guys. Here are the oxtails. They're all cleaned off, rinsed off. Uh, so I'm gonna go ahead and take all of these seasonings and get it all put in here. Then I'll cover it, put it in the refrigerator so that it can marinate. All right. So this is where we are. I'll show you guys after I get it all seasoned up. Yeah, before I put it in the refrigerator, I'll show you what it looks like. Okay, y'all, I came back just to kind of show you what I have going on. So these are the oxtails that I put the seasoning that I showed you earlier, put all those seasonings on there. I did end up adding some um, allspice that wasn't in the list before, so I did do that. Uh, so I'm just gonna, I opened up the jar of this marinade, oxtail marinade. So this is what it looks like out of the um, out of the jar. So I'm gonna actually go ahead and pour that over the oxtails and get that in there. So that's in there. Get it all. So I have that in there now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and add all of the vegetables into <coughs> The bowl and then I'm going to mix it up so I'm going to get some gloves because I don't want this on my fingers. So I have some gloves here. I'm 
think I'll add just a little bit more pepper. So go ahead, just dump all of your vegetables in there. Had a whole cough and sneeze and attack a few minutes ago because this stuff is strong, all these seasonings and <coughs> peppers and so we have them all in there. Now. I'm just gonna take it and just get down in the bowl and just get it mixed up so that the seasoning and ooh, ooh, and the vegetables are mixed all throughout. Mix it up as good as you can. All the garlic and everything. Everything gets a good coating of all the seasonings, all the marinade. So I hope this comes out good using this, this marinade. I've never tried it before. The directions on there, it seems to be more like a oxtail stew so it says to add some butter beans <clears throat> to it at the end of the cooking process so i might go to the store and get some butter beans we'll see i don't know i've never cooked oxtails in um put butter beans in it. I just pretty much always smother it with some gravy, put it over some rice, but I think I might try something different. Put the butter beans in there, if I go to the store. You know, it's just not as easy to go to the store nowadays as it, as it once was with this whole pandemic we going through, but We'll see what happens with that part. So I have it all in there. It's all coated. I'm going to show it to you guys. I made a little bit of a mess. So this is it all coated up, mixed in together, all the seasonings and everything. So I'm going to cover this up. I'm gonna add a little bit of the flour to it and mix it up a little bit more, just so that the flour is coated on there. So when I get ready to uh, brown it in the in the skillet, it'll already have the flour because that'll help be the base for my gravy that I'll have when it's all smothering and cooking together. So I'm gonna do that, put it in the refrigerator, let it sit for a few hours. I might try to get back in here later today and go ahead and get them on, if not, I'll let them sit in there overnight, and then in the morning I'll get up and, and cook it. So, depending on how I feel. So that's where we are. I'll be back with you guys later. Okay, y'all, here is the finished product of the oxtails, all seasoned with everything that I showed you that I was using, mixed up, flour, everything is on there. So now what I'm gonna do is just simply cover it Put it in the refrigerator, let it marinate till I get ready to cook it. Hey y'all, I'm back, it's a new day. So the oxtails have been marinating overnight. So let me just go ahead and show you what they look like. I've taken them out of the refrigerator and this is what they look like after sitting overnight. So what we're gonna do, I have some olive oil I'm gonna go ahead and get my cast iron preheated and then I'll put some olive oil in there and then I'll just go ahead and add the oxtails in so that I can brown them. So let me go ahead and get that started so that you guys can see that part of the process. I'm just gonna turn on the stove. So I'm gonna let the that heat up before I put the oil in. That way, once I get the oil in, take a couple of minutes for the oil to warm up, and then I'll start adding the meat. 
Okay, so I've just added some olive oil to the bottom of the, uh, of the, of the skillet and just enough to kind of coat the bottom of the uh, skillet. You don't need a lot. You're not deep frying them. You're just searing them. So basically the point is to get it, to get the meat brown on both sides. So we're gonna go ahead and kind of move the oil around a little bit so that it's just all over the bottom of the pan. So it's well coated. And I have my heating, my my flame at right at about a medium. Because the point is to sear it and not burn it. So you don't want it to be too hot, but you want it hot enough so it'll get a good sear on it. So we're just waiting on the oil to warm up. And then that way I can start adding the meat in. Now that the oil is hot enough, I'm gonna go ahead and start adding the, the oxtails in. So I'm just gonna add them in. Just lay them down in the skillet. So we have it in there. I'm gonna let that go and brown on one side, and then I'll flip it up and brown on the other side. And I'll get a um, half tong that I'll use to flip it with. Whenever I'm cooking any type of meat, I don't care whether it's on the stove, in the oven, on the uh, barbecue pit, I never like to stick my meat with a fork. I always like to use tongs to flip it with. That way you're not poking and all the juices are coming out of your meat. So I just always like to use tongs to flip my meat with. I'm gonna go ahead and flip it down. And then I'll show you guys what it looks like. Yeah. This is what it looks like. And so basically, you just want to get a steer, kind of brown it a little bit, so that once you put it in the pot, to actually simmer for a few hours, then it'll have a nice color to it when it's all done and ready to eat. So the uh, the browning seasoning that I used yesterday, that also helps out with the color of the meat, and helps give me a good brown color. So. Kind of flavors it and gives it a good color when it when it's all cooked up. I'm just gonna get this here, and then what I'll do as I take them out, I have another cast iron pot here that I'm actually gonna use to cook them in. So what I'll do is I'll take the um, the meat out, I'll get it transferred over into this pot so that once all of it's brown, it'll all be in this pot. I can have to make my gravy, put it all in this pot, put it on the stove and let it cook for a few hours. Get it all brown and get it going. So I'll get the whole bowl brown, put it in the pot, then I'll come back and show you how it looks. 
This is my last batch that I have um, that I'm searing. All the others that have already been seared over here in the pot. So this here is what's left of the marinade and vegetable seasoning that I, everything was soaking in. So once this batch comes out, we won't let this go to waste. This will then go into the skillet. So we can saute those up, add a little bit more flour so we can create a gravy that we will then pour over everything in this pot. We can put it on the stove. And then it's always somebody that wanna come and see what's going on when that smell start, starts to drift throughout the house. Folks want to come see Who's gonna do that? what's happening. Oh, this has hours to go. This is not to, about to be ready anytime soon. You need any help? You gonna help me? What you gonna help me do? The end. Huh? At the end. You gonna help eat it? Just to make sure. <laughs> Just to make sure your flavor profile is right. So that's already done. No, it's it, it's already seen. You need me. It's already seared, but it is not already done. Oh, okay. So I don't I don't know what you mean by done. That that's already seared. So this is where we are. I'll be glad. In case you're wondering uh, where I actually get my oxtails from, I like to go to uh, the meat market. I go to the one over there, uh, Bud House of Meat in South Park on Cullen. Cullen and 610. On Cullen and 610, I always go over there and I have them get me two tails and then I have them cut them to the size that I want. Because I don't like mine to be too thick because when they're too thick, they take way too long to cook. So the thinner you get them cut, the they don't take as long as to cook. So that's where I always go and get mine from. So now that I have all of the oxtail seared, I'm gonna add a little bit more all to the bottom of the pan so that I can go ahead and put the vegetables in and get the vegetables sauteed. So all of this here that's at the bottom of the pot, I'm just gonna add flavor. I'm gonna get all of that up. So, Typically, I would use, instead of water when I make my gravy, I would use a beef broth, but I don't have any. So, I'm going to have to use water. But because we had so much flavor with the marinade, using water won't be that big of a deal. And I still have my fire saying like medium, medium heat. I haven't changed the, tip, the, fire, the level of the of the flame. So I'm going to keep doing this and once I have it all brown and sauteed the way I like, I'll come back and show it to you guys. But this is what it's looking like so far. Just 
sauteing it and getting it brown so that we'll have a nice deep brown gravy on the oxtails. So here is the, the makings of the gravy. This is the gravy. So with this, you just stir it just like if you were making a roux. For your gumbo, you always have to keep stirring so that it doesn't burn. And so now that I think I have it brown, as brown as I wanted, because remember I had flour in there from before when I marinated my meat, I had put flour in, in the marinade. So I actually did not add any more flour to make the gravy. I just used <coughs> what was in it from the marinade and it actually did pretty well. So it's nice and thick right now. I'm gonna add some water to dilute it down. And you just add a little bit at a time just to get it to the consistency that you want it. Some people like thick gravy, some people like, you know, loose, watery gravy. So it just all depends on how you like your gravy. But I'm gonna start adding the water to it now. Now what I did so that I don't lose any of the flavor from any component, I went ahead and added water to the same bowl that it marinated in. So I'm just gonna add that a little bit at a time, stir it, and then that way I can make sure that I get the gravy to the consistency that I want it to be. Add a little bit more. And just get it all off the sides as you stir. <clears throat> and again, those spices are still strong. Like, I'm still hitting my nose and my throat. That's how much flavor in this. And it's more water. Because I also want to make sure I have enough to where the gravy is going to cover the oxtails completely as I put, when I put it over it in the pot. And also too, it does thicken as it cooks, so Sometimes it's okay to make it a little loose now because as it continues to cook, it'll thicken up even more, so. All right, so I got all that in there. Stir it up a little bit more. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this over here. These are all the oxtails. And I'm gonna take this and pour this over them. So, get ready to do that. Sit this here. All right. These cast iron pots be heavy. I'll pour it away from me because I don't want nothing splashing on me. So this is what we have. It's all been transferred into the bigger pot. So we have a gravy in there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn on the stove. And we're gonna put it a little bit past medium. So kind of right before where medium starts, 
that's where we're gonna put it so that it can simmer for the next few hours and get really good and tender. So we'll come back, stir it frequently just to make sure it doesn't stick and burn at the bottom. And then in a couple of hours, we'll have a finished product. Okay, so I added a little bit more water just so I can get it all of the oxtails covered as much as I could. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna go ahead and get the top on it. And I'm not gonna put the top all the way on. What I like to do is I just like to take it and kinda crack it a little bit, leave a little air minute in there. So as it cooks, it's not overflowing. So it's on and it is now 1.38. So I'll be back in a couple of hours and show you the finished product. All right, so it's been about two hours. Look, yeah, two hours since they've been cooking. So this is what it's looking like. Let me get y'all up in here. So y'all can see, this is what they're looking like here. They're nice and tender. It's starting to detach from the bone, so I don't want them to cook too much longer because I still want them to be on the bone. So what I'm gonna do, I did go ahead and get to the store and get the, the butter beans. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop some butter beans in there. So let's do that. Let's see. Open them up and rinse them off. Strain them in the sink. Ooh, never had butter beans before. I didn't know that's what they look like. <laughs> Why is he looking? they look like. I'm going to go ahead and rinse them. Just do two cans. Strain them, rinse them. And I'm going to go ahead and drop them in the in the oxtails. Butter beans. Strain them. Wait some. And so now we're gonna take them. I'm just gonna add them into the oxtails. Like that. I'm just kind of mixing them in. I'm gonna go ahead and turn these oxtails off because I'm sure the, the liquid is hot enough to where these will cook, warm up really. I'm sure that's all they have to do is some canned beans. I'm sure they don't need to do nothing but warm up. So just get them stirred down in there so they can get down in the, in the hot liquid. Steam. I put the top on there so they can steam in there, which I finished cooking them. Well, not cook them, but let them get heated through. Now let's just check with the fork and see how tender the oxtail is. You can see that, but fork tender pulls right on off. So let's taste it. A nice little kick of heat. I know that much. So when I put that over some rice. That's gonna work out real good. I went 
I got the butter beans, so I also hit, went ahead and got some cabbage and some stuff to make macaroni. So I'm gonna do some rice, macaroni, cabbage, and uh, probably some cornbread. So it'll be a complete meal. All right, so here's the finished product of the oxtails with butter beans. So I'm gonna go ahead and plate up and let you see the plate. So here is my plate with the oxtails over rice. I'm gonna go ahead and add the rest of the meal that I cooked, but just wanted you to see just the oxtails on the plate. All right, dinner is done. We do a quick little taste test. See what we have. So this is bark tender. It just comes off. A little bit of rice. It is. This is it right here. Get you some oxtails. Try it out. Let me know how it goes. Thanks for watching Living Life by the Bibles.